May I speak in the name of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 2,000 years is a long time to be waiting for a visit from a well-known and beloved friend. Perhaps that is why there is so much drama associated with the notion of Jesus' return to our earthly realm. I mean, if humanity has waited so long, then there can be no greater physical entrance back to our planet for Jesus than the Son of Man coming in a cloud. We hear today in Luke's Gospel, as he quotes Jesus, there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. For us in the past seven days, the sea and waves have underlined the fact that a transformation is needed and that something has to change. This is the week in which we lost 27 of our own, of our own human race, in the stretch of water somewhere between England and France. 27 dead, including a pregnant woman and three children, drowned. This is the week in which another woman was killed at the hands of a stranger, 18-year-old Bobby Ann McLeod from Plymouth. And this is the week in which another one of our children was fatally stabbed, 12-year-old Arva White in Liverpool. May all their souls rest in peace and rise in glory. Advent, with its big themes of death, judgment, heaven and hell, is framed by expectation, by expectant, not disillusioned waiting, by the urgency of being rather fed up with the here and now, and by reimagining a better world. It is a revolutionized world for which we wait, a world in which there is equity and justice, and in which mercy and compassion are the norm. The Advent season is here to shake us up and remind us that this revolution will not be televised, it will be lived. The power of Jesus' words and imagery made his apostles and many in the early church believe that the return of Jesus following his death rising and resurrection was imminent. After all, Jesus does say in Luke chapter 21, truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. How could they not think that they would live to see Jesus' return to walk and eat with them again. Since then, generations of Christians have believed in this second coming, which, like faith, disturbs our rational post-enlightenment thinking. How can we make sense of this rather bizarre assertion that somehow there will be this cosmic opening between heaven and earth and a new world order, this kingdom of God, will be established. In this, the first Sunday in Advent, the sense of the eternal is rooted in an earthly reveal of a plane that we cannot yet see. And we are asked to be ready. Because this revolution will not be televised, it will be lived. We read again in Luke chapter 21, be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap. 
for it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. We are asked to be alert. And I wonder whether this is a request not so much towards what will be, but rather a call to what is. To be alert to the here and now, and to all that needs to change. We are not being called to wait passively, but to wait in an active state. It is a state of becoming in which we are agitated by the spirit because we are being asked to participate, to participate in making a world in which, as we hear in Jeremiah, justice and righteousness has already been implemented and that these are the default settings. We are being invited to co-create a new world that is supported by new structures in which there is no room for misogyny, homophobia, and any of the isms we all suffer at this time. Is it too much to ask that we bring our children back from the brink of enacting violent acts against each other? Is it too much to ask that a woman can walk from her home to meet friends in a city, in this or any country, and not face harassment, assault, or even death? In the 1990s, Dr. Dennis Mukwege, the gynecologist from the Democratic Republic of Congo, who won the Nobel Prize in 2018 for his campaigning against sexual violence as a weapon of war, built a hospital in Panzi, a, a suburb of Bukavu in the DRC, and it became a maternal and sexual health facility. It is now the epicenter of integrative care for victims and survivors of those acts against women against their bodies and their minds that are now so commonplace in global conflicts. In a recent article to support his new book, The Power of Women, the journalist writes that Mukwege believes that challenging misogyny in peacetime is paramount in order to fortify society in moments of conflict. Challenging misogyny in peacetime is paramount in order to fortify society in moments of conflict. Let us not be beguiled into thinking that what happens there, in those far off theatres of war, could never happen here. How we live in peacetime, what we tolerate in peacetime, will only be exacerbated by social unrest and even worse, by national or international conflict. We are in Advent, and the heaviness of death, judgment, heaven and hell must frame the lens through which we see our world and current events. No one leaves home unless home is the mouth of a shark. You only run for the border when you see the whole city running as well. Your neighbors running faster than you, breath bloody in their mouths. The boy you went to school with who kissed you dizzy behind the old tin factory is holding a gun bigger than his body. You only leave home when home won't let you stay. No one leaves home unless home chases you. Fire under feet, hot blood in your belly. It's not something you ever thought of doing until the blade burnt threats into your neck. And even then you carried the anthem under your breath. Only tearing up your passport in an airport toilet, sobbing as each mouthful of paper 
made it clear that you wouldn't be going back. You have to understand that no one puts their children in a boat unless the water is safer than the land. These are the words by Wasan Shri, British poet born in Kenya to Somalian parents. Her poem entitled Home makes clear the reality in which we live and how our justifications of the world as it is now are starting to wear thin in the face of the constancy of the promise of God's steadfast love. It is not enough for us to sit and read the news and pray and hope because this revolution will not be televised. It will be lived. A few years ago, a close friend of mine bought me a greeting card on the front of which read, Jesus is coming, look busy. It was an inside joke as we often talked about how I could be less busy with a diary that gave me some room to breathe and write letters and be a better friend, a more attentive sister and daughter, and well, a more grounded human being and woman. But there is some truth in those words on that card. We do need to be busy. We need to be busy making the world we want to see. And it starts with our streets, our communities, our cities, our church here at St. James's Piccadilly, and our church with a capital C. We need to be busy making the world fairer, safer, more whole, not just for women and girls, though that may be my heart's call, but for men and boys and children and young people of all identities. In Advent, we are asked, and we are not expected to wait, gin and tonic or cordial in hand, deciding what next to binge watch on our streaming channel of choice. We are expected to question what exactly we are waiting for. And that is why Advent matters. Because I'm not waiting for Jesus and the heavenly host to come down with clouds descending. However wonderful the image and however joyful Wesley's lyrics, I am waiting for us. I am waiting for us for us to hear something of what the world could be and to lay down our prayers, our hearts and knowledge and skills and imagination and hands and feet to make it so. Advent is the season when we lay down our imagination to the service of a world filled with potential to be so much more than this. A revolutionized world, for we know that this revolution will not be televised, it will be lived. This Advent Sunday, we read that Jerusalem will live in safety. This is a delicious promise that I cannot yet see. Can you? Be alert at all times, says Jesus in Luke chapter 21, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The things that are taking place now in our beloved world, in which we believe Jesus already is through the Holy Spirit, already overwhelm and overpower so many. This Advent, let us recommit ourselves to doing our part, to hearing God's call to bring the world in line with the promise of a world made whole. In Dr. McQuaige's words, we all have the power to change the course of history 
when the beliefs we are fighting for are right. This revolution will not be televised. It must be lived. Amen.